It's 6 p.m. by the studio clock. You're watching Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Tina Jha. Over the next half an hour, we'll be getting you news from across the globe. First up, the top stories. Prime Minister Narendra Modi throws a Lahore surprise, meets Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif during a brief stopover. Prime Minister Modi visits Kabul for delegation-level bilateral talks, inaugurates new Afghan parliament building constructed by India. Delhi's Lieutenant Governor Najib Jung triggers new confrontation with Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal, calls inquiry panel appointed by government to probe DDCA case invalid. And the world celebrates Christmas with traditional fervour. Pope Francis addresses Midnight Mass in Vatican, calls people to shed consumerism and return to essential values. And the big news story this evening. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today sprang a Vajpayee moment by meeting Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif in Lahore. Vajpayee was the last Indian Prime Minister to visit Pakistan in 2004. Modi's stopover, which came on Vajpayee's 91st birthday, immediately invited comparisons with the former Prime Minister's own bus ride to Lahore back in 1999. A surprise stopover by Prime Minister Narendra Modi in Lahore. Modi broke the news on Twitter. Modi ostensibly was dropped by to wish Pakistan Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif on his 66th birthday on Friday. News agencies quoted officials saying Sharif's granddaughter was getting married on Saturday and Modi was expected to convey his greetings and take part in the festivities. The brief touchdown was Prime Minister Modi's first visit to Pakistan. No Indian Prime Minister has visited Pakistan in the last 12 years. Modi's announcement of the stopover comes in the backdrop of a sustained period of strained relations between the two nations. Commending the gesture, Foreign Minister Shushma Swaraj tweeted that it was a statesman-like gesture towards a neighbour. Both Modi and Sharif met in Paris last month on the sidelines of the Climate Change Summit. This signalled talks between the national security advisers that were secretly held in Bangkok on December 6. Some days later, Shushma Swaraj visited Islamabad for an Afghan conference. PM Modi is expected to visit Pakistan next year for the SARC summit. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And former Foreign Minister Mr. Natwar Singh joins us on the phone line. Uh, many thank you, sir, for joining us on Rajya Sabha TV. Your first reactions on this unprecedented gesture by Prime Minister Narendra Modi? I think he is a very good step. I think we should welcome it. I certainly do. Mm -hmm. It was a, a very imaginative thing to do, and I think it will strengthen India Park relations. And he, <clears throat> he must have thought about it at the last moment, unless they had spoken about it earlier. Mm -hmm. But he there for two hours, and I think this is a continuation of the composite dialogue that began some weeks ago. Right. Um, Mr. Singh, you've been a foreign minister yourself. Do you think such a high-level meet uh, could not uh, could be possible at such a short notice, considering the protocol, the machinery-level preparations that uh, goes into uh, such uh, meetings? Oh, no, it can. There's no problem at all. They're doing it all the time. They're all over Europe. They're meeting each other every third day okay. and um, in our flight. So, and in, the, in the modern age, mm -hmm. there's no problem at all. And then, you know, the protocol that is required mm -hmm. will be put in place at no time. Okay, and what do you expect from this visit? What can India expect? Do you think it's uh, changing the rules of the conventional diplomacy by Prime Minister Narendra Modi? No, as I said, I mean, he's taken a very... You see, its symbolism is important. It sends a message of its own. I don't think anything substantial could be discussed after he's gone for somebody's marriage or something, mm -hmm. and he there for a short while. But the fact that they are, this is their second meeting or third meeting within a few weeks, it's a good sign. And uh, people have been hankering all the time, why don't we start dialogue, composite dialogue? Well, he started it. And I think uh, the foreign minister going there is a good step. She had uh, met the prime minister and other people. Mm -hmm. I think at the moment, I don't think that Mr. Modi's visit for two hours will make any fundamental change in our bilateral relations, but it's a good step. 
All right, but uh, Mr. Singh, also, you know, the party was not informed about this. The Ministry of External Affairs Ministry did not know much about this visit. Do you think it sends out a positive message as far as public is concerned? Because when he started off, it was, uh, I mean, in the pre-election mode, it was something which uh, was completely opposite to what the Prime Minister is doing now. No, listen, at least this visit, he has made it public. In the diplomacy, we made... Uh, um, Without any public glare, we meet, have confidential meetings. People don't even know about them. So at least there is nothing clandestine about it. He's gone there openly. All right, Mr. Singh. Thank you very much for joining us and yeah. giving us your perspective. Meanwhile, let's also go across to our correspondent, Akhilesh Suman, who's joining us from New Delhi. Uh, Akhilesh, an unprecedented move by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. But you had been following his visit to uh, Russia first and then Afghanistan. Did you have any hint that something like this uh, would come up, that Prime Minister would make a stopover in Pakistan? Uh, no, Tina, actually, frankly speaking, there was no hint at all that he will go to Pakistan. Hmm. But there were hints that he will go to Afghanistan, though it was not formally announced. Hmm. But now, if I can tie up or uh, tie all the, uh, all the logics that were there a week earlier, I have met uh, Susma Swara, the external affairs minister, and she has gone to uh, Nawaz Sarif's home in uh, Islamabad. And I had asked her, that, did, who, whom did you meet? And she told that I met Nawaz Sarif's wife, Nawaz Sarif's daughter, mm -hmm. and her granddaughter. So, so it was a, in a very pleasant mode. Uh, I think she expressed all these things. So I think that was the time when this, uh, this uh, plan was made. And uh, the invitation was uh, uh, expressed from uh, Prime Minister Nawaz Sarif of Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And that is why um, Prime Minister Nair Modi has gone there. And if you remember when Prime Minister Narendra Modi took oath, Nawaz Sharif also had given surprise to the whole Pakistani people and also the Indian people. He came personally to be to attend the oath taking ceremony of Prime Minister. It was long overdue by Prime Minister Narendra Modi to visit um, Pakistan in such a way that uh, soothes the Pakistani people. Also, those it is like a googly ball to stump out all those who oppose India-Pakistan relationship in a stable way, whatever way it is. But it should be a stable way. I think that Narendra Modi has taken a lead mm -hmm. and it is a big courageous move from the external affairs ministry it, mm -hmm. it must be planned earlier it is not that surprise but it has been kept secret mm -hmm. so that media does not start judging it political parties are does not start judging it and even parliament was in session it could have been a big issue tina akhilesh do stay with us uh, we're being joined by imtiaz ghul senior journalist and political analyst from islamabad uh, imtiaz ghul many thanks for joining us on Rajya Sabha tv uh, first of all, your first reactions to this surprise visit by the Indian Prime Minister and how are the Pakistanis responding to this visit? Well, I think uh, most Pakistanis have uh, wel welcomed this uh, unusual surprise uh, initiative uh, and uh, most of the people are happy that uh, the acrimony that had been kicked up in the last year or so uh, and uh, the way the, the dialogue, the bi bilateral relations had come to a standstill is... Uh, it's apparently finally over, and that a two-minute meeting between the two prime ministers uh, in Paris uh, last month basically managed to pay way, and uh, it has taken both countries beyond, practically beyond the baby steps that had been promised to a, a major step. However symbolic uh, this visit may be, mm. but I think it itself uh, means a lot for the relations between the two countries, and one could only hope that... Uh, they can finally resume the dialogue on all contentious issues hmm. uh, while trying to find a middle way, a middle path for engagement rather than sticking to their uh, positions on Kashmir on terrorism. Hmm. I think for, for quite some time we heard from India that uh, talks and terrorism can't go hand in hand. And also from Pakistan, we heard that uh, Kashmir would remain the core issue. So the key for continuing uh, the dialogue for resuming the dialogue and taking it forward in a positive direction would be for both to find a middle ground for talks on these two particular issues. But Mr. Gould, do you think Pakistan has now uh, agreed to talk on Jammu Kashmir and terrorism? Uh, the contentious issue on which the NSA level talks earlier were cancelled. Then a secret level meeting, of course, was held in Bangkok. But, of, uh, but uh, back home in India, there was a lot of uh, you and cry about Pakistan not agreeing to the, uh, to the UFA agreement, to the terms and conditions uh, that were agreed upon by both prime ministers in UFA. Do you think something has changed from there then? Well, I think uh, uh, 
we we really need to move on rather than trying to dig hmm. dig into the history and then continuing to uh, taint and strain the bilateral relationship. Certainly, hmm. there's been enough discussion on UFA, uh, has, and I think what has happened in Paris last month, probably both countries, both leaderships, uh, should try to build on that, putting behind the past acrimony and working for a better future. I mean. It's now, I think, uh, incumbent upon both governments. Also, Pakistan should welcome this uh, surprise visit and take it as an opportunity hmm. to uh, repair the fractured relationship. Hmm. And I think uh, it also underscores uh, the realization in New Delhi, particularly by Prime Minister Modi, that uh, the kind of uh, hostility hmm. we saw in the last year or so was probably not the right way to engage with Pakistan, and that there's a reconciliation with the fact that talks and terror can go together while both countries, both uh, the stakeholders can try to talk out their differences rather than indulging in unusual brinkmanship, which basically meant tensions in the region and quite a acrimonious atmosphere between the two countries, which also, I think, cast this ominous shadows on smaller countries and particularly uh, precipitate uh, the crisis such as uh, the one we see in Afghanistan. Mm. Mr. Gould, this is a new kind of diplomacy we are seeing now between both prime ministers. Do we expect a similar gesture from the Pakistani prime minister sometime in the future? Well, I think Pakistan, uh, to be honest, has been uh, uh, inviting for the last so many years uh, former prime minister, Mr. Manmohan Singh, to visit Islamabad. It never came about. And now Mr. Modi Singh has come, his, come to Pakistan on his own. And I think this uh, basically... Uh, augurs well, and uh, I'm sure that uh, given opportunity, given space, the Prime Minister, the Pakistani Prime Minister, wouldn't hold back any goodwill gesture, any confidence building measures that Pakistan can offer to India to hmm. to help take this relationship into a new phase. Hmm. A similar kind of diplomacy, Mr. Gul, was seen when uh, Mr. Atal Bihari Vajpayee, our former Prime Minister, uh, took that bus ride to Lahore. Uh, things were very positive, but uh, later on we saw things didn't, didn't materialize and the relations between both countries, of course, worsened over time. So now this time, is it a positive note? Should both countries be very positive about where the relations are now heading towards? Well, you know, I'm a perennial optimist. Uh, I would uh, hope that uh, both countries basically uh, bury the past uh, acrimony and that uh, whatever happened uh, in uh, 1999, I was also part of uh, a part of the media that was covering uh, Mr. Vajpayee's visit to Lahore. It was quite uh, an unusual historic moment, so then spoiled by the Kargil uh, conflict. But one, and, uh, those were times when there was quite... Uh, quite a division between the civilian and military leaderships uh, in Pakistan. But now in Pakistan, I think uh, after a very long time, particularly in the last year or so, we have seen the unfolding of a new dynamic, hmm. uh, a new kind of relationship between the civilian and military leadership, regardless whether it is enforced or voluntary. But we see that both are moving in tandem as far as the issue of terrorism is concerned. And one also would hope that they take into consideration uh, the reservations by Afghanistan, by India, uh, all, and a number of steps have already been taken. Also, I think probably in, um, in view of the Indian reservations vis-a-vis -vis lashkar e taiba or jamaat e dawa hmm. uh, we don't see that party or its leaders anymore on Pakistani television. They have been banned. And similar small steps. Uh, and I think uh, if the political situation inside the country uh, allows and if the relationship with India the dialogue with India gets better. Uh, I'm sure we will find more, we will see more such steps being taken to mm. neutralize the constituencies of wars and to help expand the constituency of peace and dialogue certainly, certainly. Uh, between the two countries in, in, in favor of the teeming millions in both countries who are living below the poverty line. Mm. All right, Mr. Gould, many thanks for speaking to us and giving us your perspective. So, Imtiaz Gould joining us from Islamabad. Meanwhile, while the government saw a new radical approach to India's relationship with Pakistan away from the media glare and political speculation, the opposition is not impressed. The Congress called the approach extremely casual, while the left leaders wondered what will come out of it. It is surprise, it is surprise, but uh, some work should have gone into 
uh, the planning is uh, uh, travel via Lagor and meeting Ms. Nawaz Sharif. And uh, one should welcome it and uh, we hope uh, this will further uh, strengthen uh, our uh, efforts uh, to resolve our uh, vexed disputes. मुझे उम्मीद है और उम्मीद थी कि प्रधानमंत्री जिस दिन काबुल या इस्लामाबाद जाएंगे तो लौटते हुए दाऊद इब्राहिम को और हाफिज सईद को साथ लेकर आएंगे मुझे बहुत पीड़ा हुई कि वो केक खाने के लिए इस्लामाबाद जा रहे हैं नहीं इसमें कोई तो क्या तर्क तो दिखता नहीं है ये वैसे कोई दिखावा करना चाहते हैं या एक बात प्रस्तुत करना चाहते हैं कि हम अपनी तरफ से कोशिश कर रहे हैं पाकिस्तान से मित्रता की ये वही हो सकता है एक और ड्रामा वाली बात है कि पाकिस्तान और हिंदुस्तान के संबंध कोई दस बार मिलने से तीन बार मिलने से नहीं सुलझ सकते हैं क्वेश्चन विल बी रेज वॉट इज चेंज विद रिलेशनशिप विद पाकिस्तान सो सडनली दैट द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंडिया इज मेकिंग एन अनस्केड्यूल विजिट especially when he is visiting another foreign country we will wait for the government to brief the nation if the two countries can try to have a positive approach and work out a relationship that brings peace not only between them but to the entire region and therefore to the world that is something that should be welcome obviously we do have a troubled past our concerns are going to be those concerns but if we do not make an attempt something will not change Let's go uh, go back across to our correspondent Akhilesh, who's joining us from the newsroom. Uh, Akhilesh, uh, so the manner, the secretive way in which this meeting was held, the Prime Minister suddenly announcing his stopover in Ra Lahore. Can we say that you know uh, the diplomacy of stealth is now the way ahead for India? Ah, actually, you, if you see the whole path, uh, Prime Minister is coming from Moscow. He landed in Kabul, and he again came to Lahore, and he will come to Delhi. so i think this is the way on which the whole uh, of the russian chinese indians are working for last one year and by next year uh, shanghai cooperation organization meeting will be held in india and both india and pakistan are going to be the permanent member full member of sco hmm. so i think prime minister is thinking about the connectivity for long time between russia central asian countries and pakistan and india and also iran so i think it is a very good move when even the opposition is telling you have, have heard d raja's statement while it is it, it must have been prepared for uh, for some time because uh, he is also welcoming even when he is telling that uh, there was no announcement but he is welcoming so i think it is a mix of uh, uh, one who is in opposition he is telling in some other words but who is not in opposition and who is also in opposition also welcoming in some way or other so hmm. i think it is a way that uh, it is a surprise move but it is a welcome move by many of the diplomats are telling many of the experts are telling and even hmm. the political class feeling a bit soother and journalists are also feeling very pleasant that something has come out and uh, some story even when we are taken by surprise but some story is coming certainly, in a certain way certainly yeah. akhilesh thank you so much for giving us your inputs so the prime minister there is bringing up a surprise on christmas day with that we head into a very short break much more news lined up for you on the other side get live rajya sabha session news views reports and analysis you can trust on social media subscribe follow like rajya sabha television Welcome back. You're watching News at six. So before Prime Minister Narendra Modi made that stopover in Lahore, he addressed the Afghan Parliament earlier in the day. Shortly after, he inaugurated the Parliament Building in Kabul. The Parliament Building was built by India. Started in 2009, the construction missed completion deadlines at least three times since 2011. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday inaugurating the new building of Afghanistan's parliament built by India built as a gesture of friendship the building was constructed at an estimated cost of 90 million dollars speaking on the occasion 
Modi said war torn Afghanistan would succeed only if terrorist activities were stopped from across the border. Afghanistan will succeed only when terrorism no longer flows across the border. When nurseries and centuries of terrorism are struck and their patterns are no longer in business. Modi also inaugurated a new block named after former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee. Modi told Afghanistan parliamentarians that it was necessary to stop flow of terrorism from across the border without naming Pakistan. We know that Afghan success will require the cooperation and support of each of its neighbors. And all of us in the region, India, Pakistan, Iran and others, must unite in trust and cooperation behind this common purpose and in recognition of our common destiny. Modi sought the support of Pakistan and other neighbors in rebuilding the war ravaged Afghanistan. India has played a significant role in the reconstruction and rehabilitation of Afghanistan. According to the Foreign Ministry, India's extensive developmental assistance program for Afghanistan now stands at around $2 billion. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. All right, so for more on that, we're being joined by former ambassador to Afghanistan, Mr. Vivek Karju. A very good evening, sir, and welcome to Rajya Sabha TV. Uh, first of all, we'll come to the Afghanistan visit of the Prime Minister later on in the bulletin. But first of all, let's uh, get your reaction on the Prime Minister's surprise visit to Pakistan today. Well, it is truly a dramatic development. Uh, but uh, it remains to be seen whether it will have the desired effects. I think it's also in keeping with the Prime Minister's desire as he uh, expressed to uh, the combined commanders conference recently uh, that uh, the Pakistan engagement is an attempt to turn the course of history. And uh, finally, the Prime Minister does believe in, uh, in personal diplomacy. So this is part of that. Mm -hmm. It's a good step. Uh, but uh, it remains to be seen whether all uh, institutions in Pakistan, especially the Pakistan army, uh, is on board with right. these developments. But, uh, so do you think it's a progressive move by the Prime Minister because, you know, first the NSA's meeting, secret meeting in uh, Bangkok, now the Prime Minister's sudden stopover, uh, the party members have not been kept in loop, the External Affairs Ministry does not have much information, so as far as the media is reporting, do you think by doing this, the Prime Minister is changing the rules of conventional diplomacy? Well, certainly it's an unconventional step. Uh, it's not known whether... The Pakistani side had been sounded in advance uh, or whether this was done fairly quickly. But uh, nevertheless, uh, it will, uh, it is designed to have an impact on public opinion. Uh, and uh, it, as I said, there are question marks. Uh, it may prove to be uh, useful or uh, it may, uh, again, uh, depending on the reaction of the Pakistan army, because the Pakistan army and not Mr. Nawaz Sharif, are the crucial decision makers of Pakistan's India policy. And therefore, it depends on how they react uh, to this uh, development. But also, Mr. Karju, do you not think that, you know, the, the Modi government has been very inconsistent as far as the relations with Pakistan is concerned? Because, you know, uh, first the, uh, the Prime Minister invited SARC leaders for the swearing-in ceremony. Then we saw the NSA level talks. Then they were cancelled. Then the UFA uh, happened suddenly. And then again, the NSA is meeting secret, secretly in Bangkok. Uh, the opposition, of course, terms it as a mere photo op. But do you think the government has not been very consistent? That's, that's something very true. I think, uh, yes, there has been a back and forth on uh, the Pakistan policy. Uh, Mr. Modi's instinct is, of course, as he said uh, at the commander's conference, to turn the course of history. Uh, but uh, in doing so, uh, there has been a degree, as I said, of back and forth. And now uh, the, the course seems to be set. The only thing is whether uh, this policy 
of engaging Pakistan uh, to bring about a transformation in the relationship will re really progress because, as you know, foreign relations and bilateral relations are not a one-sided affair. There has to be an interlocutor on the other side. Hmm. The Pakistani Prime Minister seems to be genuinely interested in building a, a new relationship. But, as I said, he is not the final decision maker on this process in Pakistan. Hmm. All right, then, moving on to Afghanistan now, sir. Though all the action lies in Pakistan today, let's also take a look at what the Prime Minister did in Afghanistan today. Earlier in the day, he was in Afghanistan. Uh, what do you think are the major key takeaways from his uh, one-day visit to Kabul? I think this is a very significant visit uh, for India's interests. Uh, the Prime Minister did well uh, to uh, stop over in Kabul uh, and uh, to hand over or rather to inaugurate the new parliament building. Uh, I recollect that when I was ambassador in Kabul in 2004, uh, President Karzai had sounded out uh, the Indian government. In fact, he had called me in and had mentioned that he wanted India to, uh, to build the parliament building. And uh, the, government welcomed, the government of India welcomed that, uh, that initiative of President Karzai. And today was a happy day that uh, f finally uh, Prime Minister Modi uh, inaugurated that building along with the Afghan president, uh, Ashraf Ghani. And it is particularly heartening that one of the halls of the building is named after uh, Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee and it's called Atal, I think, Atal Hall. Hmm. It's called Atal Block. Atal Block. I hmm. think that's a particularly good thing. Also, do you think, I mean, you know, addressing the parliament today, once again, the prime minister said something which is very contrary to what he did later in the day, because uh, while speaking in parliament, what he said was, you know, that India's presence in Afghanistan, India's involvement in Afghanistan has certainly not made people across the border happy. Again, of course, a veiled attack on Pakistan. What do you have to say on that? No, I think the prime minister was, was speaking uh, the, the factual situation. Uh, Pakistan has always wanted to deny India any role in Afghan affairs. It feels very nervous with the Indian presence in Afghanistan. And it has always wanted to exercise a veto on uh, Afghanistan's policy towards uh, foreign policy, uh, especially this policy towards India. So what the Pakistan, what Prime Minister was saying was absolutely true. All right, Mr. Kardju, many thanks for joining us today and giving us your perspective on that. Many thanks. Meanwhile, back home, Delhi's Lieutenant Governor Najib Jung has called the Aam Aadmi Party government's decision to appoint a commission of inquiry to investigate the DDCA case as invalid. Responding to the observation, Kejriwal accused the centre of misusing the Lieutenant Governor's office. Another tussle between the LG and the Delhi Chief Minister. Arvin Kejriwal on Friday objected to letters from Najib Jung's office being leaked to the media. In the letter, the LG had questioned the legality of the inquiry panel set up to investigate the irregularities in the Delhi District Cricket Association. If the LG office is leaking the government, I think it's a very serious matter. Who will go to this rule 23? Who will go to the file LG? इसके अलावा कोई फाइल एलजी के पास जाने की जरूरत नहीं है एलजी साहब कोई डिक्टेटर नहीं है कमीशन ऑफ इंक्वायरी कौन बनाएगा वो इसके ट्रांजैक्शन ऑफ बिजनेस रूल्स के शेड्यूल में दिया हुआ है आइटम नंबर थर्टीन कैबिनेट को और लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली को बनाने का अधिकार है कहीं एल का नाम नहीं लिखा हुआ एल जी इज रिपोर्टेड टू हैव टोल्ड द होम मिनिस्ट्री दैट अंडर दमीशन ऑफ इंक्वायरी एक्ट नाइनटीन ओनली द सेंटर एंड स्टेट गवर्नमेंट कैन अपॉइंट कमीशन ऑफ इंक्वायरी सिंस डेली इज अनियन टेरिटरी The Aam Aadmi Party government can order the inquiry only with the centre's concurrence through the LG. Why is it that the Aam Aadmi Party takes decisions only in those areas where a confrontation is assured, areas where they don't have the authority? This only shows that their intention is to create a confrontation and create a media war so that they can be relevant. Otherwise, there are thousands of areas where they don't require the involvement of either the LG or the central government and they can work independently. The Delhi cabinet set up a one-member inquiry commission to probe the alleged irregularities in Delhi District Cricket Association involving Finance Minister Arun Jaitley. Jaitley has filed a case of defamation against Kejriwal and other Aam Aadmi Party leaders for linking him with the alleged corruption in the cricket body. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV.
That's it from us in this news bulletin. Before we end, a look at Christmas festivities from around the world. Picture this as we take your leave, wishing you all a Merry Christmas.